Ngayon, sino yun? Yung king na nasa verse 1? Si Alceros. I, Daniel, understood the books. Ito. Ito yung picture na aming doctrine. Ito yung uh, pinakabuod ng summary. Uh, Daniel. Okay. So, this is the uh, Daniel 8.14 verse 14 2300 prophecy. Yeah. So, Seventh-day Adventists believe that this prophecy is continually historicist. Um, simply, we call the uh, principle as historicist. Why historicist? Because there are four major study about this 2300 prophecy. First is the preterism. What is preterism? Preterism focuses that 2300 is almost fulfilled in the past. Second, futuristic. Futuristic, it focuses that uh, 2300 will not start at the 457 BC, but in the future. Then, third, idealistic. Idealistic, um, this idea focuses on um, focuses on this prophecy, but not believing that it will fulfill. But they have the idea about the matter. So, Seventh-day Adventist uses the fourth one. What is the fourth one? It says, Historicist. Um, we have the, uh, all the uh, year date principle. So, so uh, we're going to read Daniel 8.14. Yes, Paul. Yes, yes. Yes, Pastor. Okay, okay. So, yeah. Daniel 814 and said, He said, and in 2,300 days, then shall be the sanctuary will be cleansed. So, as I heard, uh, Pastor Lito a while ago, I don't, he, uh, I don't uh, hear any sanctuary doctrine. So, I believe that the end time church has no sanctuary doctrine. So, may I ask, when will be the sanctuary will be cleansed based on end time, uh, end time doctrine? Do we need to answer? Yes. Yes. The time of when it will be cleansed. It will be cleansed after. during that after the death of Antiochus Epiphanes, uh, when he invaded the, the Jerusalem. Okay. So, two thousand three. May I may I see the ano the yeah. So we will start with the counting of 457 BC. Do you agree that the uh, founding of the Jerusalem is on 457 BC, right? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. It's 445 BC. It is the going for the document of Daniel 9.24. Okay. So we will start the counting on the 457 Seven BC. Yeah. Then in the four hundred fifty seven BC, okay. Um, we will uh, use the year day uh, uh, principle that the two thousand three hundred days will be converted into two thousand three hundred years. Yeah. So, brother Guller, how about the 
um, uh, computation here. Can you explain? Okay, mga uh, by the way, uh, one of our computations during 2030 days is the dark ages. Okay. Within 1260 yes. years. In the year 11. We, uh, we uh, the reformations tried to pure, purify their faith through Bible and Bible and was massacred by Catholics. Well, under the powerful order of the people who 538 just didn't know them. So it was stopped in 1790 by the power of France. French Revolution, Pope Pius XVI was captured and, and exiled on the island of Valens and was died there. So that's the starting where the papal power was getting its deadly wound. Deadly wound. Then 1959, the deadly wound was slowly starting to heal during Latin Antiquity. That's the starting point that the Vatican made a uh, uh, Pope King. No? He is a king also, he is also a priest. And he has a state that is called Vatican. Okay? Daniel 8, 14, this is the story which the 2300 days, the ending of this 2300 days from 457 BC to 18, 44 BD. Okay. Oh, So then <laughs> okay, uh, in this time, my, my, my brothers and friends, the 2300 days, that's the starting point in which uh, Jesus Christ, uh, October 22, 1844, it went to the most holy place in heavenly sanctuary. So he, 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 he ran to please God sanctuary. Yes. yes, that is the investigative judgment. Why, why do the, the, why do Christ need to to sanctify the sanctuary? No, no, I don't think he went there to cleanse the sanctuary. So why, why did Christ need to cleanse the sanctuary in heaven? Because uh, that is the, his last ministry. That on uh, the day of atonement, uh, uh, his own blood. He is he is all be a high priest uh, talking to the father to give uh, to give us more time to be investigated. Investigative judgment. Yeah. Uh, you don't understand that sequence if you don't understand the sanctuary that we Yeah. You may Muslim admits that the Seventh-day Adventist has a unique doctrine, the Sanctuary doctrine. Yeah. Okay? Uh, we will um, discuss briefly about the, the heavenly uh, Sanctuary doctrine. So, can we flash the Hebrews 9 verse 12 in the screen? Thank you. And it says that, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but the own blood he entered on the holy place, have we obtained eternal redemption for us. So Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12, uh, it, um, it describes what Jesus Christ has to do uh, when he entered the most holy place. And it said that the redemption, because the the uh, uh, sacrificing the blood of the animals were finished, because in Colossians two fourteen to sixteen it says that the uh, the ceremonial law, ceremonial law about the bringing 
of the blood of the animals for the atonement is done. So therefore, the atonement or the uh, payment for our sins are being uh, paid by Jesus Christ through His blood in the most holy place. So that is the investigative judgment and also the Christ ministry in heavenly sanctuary. Because there is sanctuary in the time of Moses. In the time of Moses, the sanctuary was made it is copied from the heavenly sanctuary. Wait, uh, I will um, search for the verse. So, okay, ito. Okay, let's go back on the Hebrews chapter 8. Verse 2, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 2. It says that a minister of the sanctuary and, and the truth, the vernacular, uh, the vernacular, which the Lord pitch and not man. So it says that there is a tabernacle. So in the, uh, in the sanctuary in the land, in the time of Moses, there is a tabernacle. Uh, tabernacle. So there is a tabernacle inside the sanctuary in the heaven. So it is not made by man but of God. So the the sanctuary in the time of Moses was copied in the heavenly sanctuary where Jesus Christ failing our sins and meditate um he, uh, he will become the mediator for us. So that is the doctrine of the heavenly sanctuary. So before we before we continue, I would like uh, Brother Julier to uh, explain more about the 2300 and details about the uh, computation. So let's, let's go back. Okay, uh, okay let's continue. So the 2300 days or years prophecy uh, started from 457 BC to 1844. So there are many events was uh, uh, happened, especially Dark Ages. You know Dark Ages? Uh, even reading Bible is forbidden. When you read Bible, it will be executed publicly. Remember that, that the Spain conquered Philippines. Remember that? From 1521. Oh, there's a song. March, March 16, 1521. Magellan discovered by, I know, Philippines was discovered by Magellan. Magellan was a soldier of the Pope. He was part of the 10 divided kingdom. Yes, his mission is to put crosses on which the He put crosses. No, <laughs> 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 He put crosses. You know the first uh, uh, the first place that the Jilla went in uh, a foreigner missionary. Huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Slave. Okay. We are slave of the Spanish era. 
you know, the, uh, do you know the no limit on hearing? Uh, Rizal wrote a very controversial against Catholic doctrine statement. He said there, there is no such purgatory on the Bible and on a new and even Maccabees. So, Rizal was executed on Donita. And even the Gumbursa, the Gumbursa are starting to read the Bible. They are executed. Because reading the Bible is forbidden. I have, uh, within 1,260 years, Sabbath keeping is forbidden. You will be killed. This week, order was born. Rosicrucian was born. Freemason was born. Different secret society was created to destroy the, the group Christian. Okay. Penance, you know penance? You can pay your sins. If you know sins for the future, you can take an advance. For, for example, murder, uh, $25 murder. You can pay $50. You can kill two persons and your sins are paid. That is penance. <coughs> Sabbath to Sunday. That is not biblical, my friend. You know, I have a book, a little book about Sunday keeping. The Catholic Advents. There are lots of Protestant churches left the Catholic Church. But what happened? They are laughing. Why? Because you are like a young girl trying to run away from her mother but bringing the in her pocket. No, bringing her, bringing her supply, supply. Oh, come. That's 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 the uh, this picture. When you keep Sunday and you are Protestant, you are still her child because of Sunday. That's why this is part of. Revival and Reformation, even in this church, you are truly reading the Bible. There is no such order that God said Sunday is the day of worship. No such way. The Catholic Church has made 321 AD during the Dark Ages that we, Constantine, claim that the Sunday is the power and mark of my authority. You cannot say in the Bible and give it the apostle. Okay, you keep Sunday, Sabbath is no more. Sabbath is still, still existing today. So, okay, time for minutes. Worship images. When you don't worship, with the first, okay, you worship Santa Catalina's statues. When you don't obey, you will be hung publicly. That's the sad story of that is Okay, for 1,046 years, it was expired on the day of when France became a superpower. You know, Pope Pius XVI was captured by General Berthier under the leadership of Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, in which the atheism, you don't believe in God anymore because of the persecution, French people, you know, that is he don't like religion anymore. Yes. That's why the Pope, the papacy was gave a wound. The carousel was so good. What are you going to say now? Okay, we make a hit at a uh, 457 BC to 1844 is 2,300 years. What happened on 1844? 1844 is one of our most unforgettable experience. The Seventh-day Adventist is not yet created in that year. It was Millerite movement. Millerite movement. Miller, William Miller is not our founder. Okay, He's, He is a Baptist preacher. No, no. Okay. Ellen White was one of the, the founder of Seventh-day Adventists. 
Kilala niyo pa yung pa? O, oh, malis. Malis na yung pa. Joseph Pace. Okay, tatagalog na ako ha? Oo, oh, no, no. The viewer. Wala na po ba siya? There's no more time. Tatagalogin mo naman. We have listener. Please say hello to Brother Robert Strowman. So, don't worry, it's our time. It's our hardship, it's our turn to speak hard English. No speed. Five minutes? Okay, five minutes. No, 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 you cannot speak Tagalog because we have a mission here. If you want tonight, the last part tonight, because tonight we still have fellowship, okay? So, I'd like to fit... Uh, explain for 20 minutes. Um, and anyone can uh, cooperate with me. Okay? And I wish to comment on 2,300 days. Although this is under a ministerial topic of 70 weeks of Daniel, but the main topic now, and we are going to answer is the sanctuary. And since this is English, after I upload this in YouTube, I'm going to cut the English portion. I'm going to repost the English to the English group. Now, I have several things to say about 2,300 days. First, please take note. Please check their taking notes. Okay? So, number one. How many of you knows Hanukkah? Hanukkah. Say Amen. amen. Okay. Hanukkah is a festival that came out from 2,300 days. So let's talk about the fulfillment, the original fulfillment. We also believe a future, you say, you say, you say, it's a futurist, no? We also believe in a future fulfillment in the tribulation period. At a parallel fulfillment, a type and shadow. But let's go to the original historical fulfillment. When Daniel wrote about 2,300 days, it was not yet the Greek Empire. It was still under Medo Persian Empire. The Medo Persian Empire will be toppled by the Greek Empire. Under the Greek Empire, they will be split in four, and one of those generals will have a descendant named Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus Epiphanes will defile the temple. After defiling the temple, there is a prophecy of 2,300 days until the sanctuary will be cleansed. So historically, the Maccabees defeated the forces of Antiochus, not directly because he was killed by God, supernaturally. And the forces left behind still held the temple. That's why it took 2,300 days. That's almost less than seven years. Almost same as tribulation period. Now, after 2,300 days, the sanctuary was cleansed on December, our Christmas season of the world. That's the Jewish Hanukkah holiday. Uh, the Jewish Hanukkah holiday is the cleansing they celebrate the cleansing of the temple. They cleanse the temple. How did they cleanse the temple? They, the Antiochus offered a pig on the altar. And they put many Christmas, like today's Christmas decoration of the temple. And cleansing the temple means removing all those things. Remo removing all those uh, paganic uh, decorations in the temple. Huh? Remodeling? That's hell. <laughs> uh, it's decoration. They did, not, they did not change the physical structure. They used the temple for their pagan gods. So cleansing the temple literally is um, removing all the pagan uh, decorations in the temple. Now, so the original 2300 days is literal days. You do not make it to 2,300 years. So, what SDA has taught is, starting from 70 weeks, 
you count 2,300 days, 2,000 from the time of seven, start of the 70 weeks, you count 2,300 years, it will end up in 1844, correct? 1844. 1844, Christ entered the sanctuary, the most holy place. Okay? So, for them, 2,300 years is Christ entering the holy place. Then, at 1844, he entered the most holy place. That's the explanation. Okay. Uh, let me explain. Hebrews 9 did not take place just in 1844. Hebrews 9 took place after Christ ascended up on high. You remember Christ said, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father and your Father and my God and your God. Why did Christ? John 20, 17. Why did Christ say, touch me now? Because he is a high priest. He is a lamb. When a high priest enters the most holy place, he cannot be disturbed. He cannot be talked to by anyone. He must be by himself. And he can even die while sprinkling the blood of atonement in the altar. That is what we are reading in Hebrews chapter 9. He appeared in the presence of God to offer up the sacrifice of himself. Him being the high priest, him being the Lamb of God. So Hebrews chapter 9 took place after Christ ascended up, up, up on high. After he offered himself up, he went back down to earth again to fellowship with the brethren for... 40 days. After 40 days, he went up again to be the mediator. Okay? So, what does that mean? It means, it's not just 1844 that Christ entered the most holy place to offer up himself. From the time that he ascended out of high, bringing captivity captive, he was mediating. It's no longer offering. There's a difference. You died. You offered your, yourself up. You offered the, sac the sacrificial life. After that, you mediate for the people. So it's not just 1844. From the time that Christ ascended up in on Pentecost until today, Christ is in the presence of God mediating between God and man. That is the proper placement of prophecy. Okay? Now let me give a similar sanctuary typology. Could you erase this? Uh, are you going to use this later? No, no, no. Please erase. I wish, to, I wish to show something very important. This is the end time, not uh, all end time, on the end time. And version of sanctuary similar to SDA, okay? In the end time message, they have what they call there is this also, there is this also, 1963, as though all all mysteries has been open to William Branham. <laughs> the end time message have that version. The end time message have 1963 to say, oh, it is the time of investigative judgment. Uh, by the way. Let me give some clarification. I will agree with the investigative judgment of SDA. It is the investigation of our hearts. But let me again re repeat. I don't believe it's only in 1844. Every believer will be investigated in their lifetime. Now let's talk about when I quoted end time message uh, 1960. I'm not saying I believe this. I'm just quoting them to say I have my own version. Let's go back to 70 weeks. Did you know the 70 weeks
did not finish yet. Was not yet finished. It stopped at 69. After it stopped at 69, that one week left, that is the sanctuary. So let me compare SDA version and so let's say from what I gleaned from it, compare it biblically. In the SDA version, it was 1844 that Christ entered the most holy place. Symbolically. I'm going to follow that thought. I'm going to show biblically when would that be. It's not 1844. 69th week stopped at the cross. From the cross to the tribulation period, that is the holy place. Christ. I'm following the train of thought of the SDA as Christ entered the holy place, then through the most holy place. I, I can use that, but I'm going to use this illustration because that illustration is um, not exactly my drawing. I'm going to follow up the most holy, the holy place. Focus on this, which I, I don't have any illustration of that first. We still have to make this track. And the most holy place. I'm going to prove that the most holy place is the last week of Daniel. Remember the uh, sixfold prophecy, Daniel 9. Daniel 9.34 Reconciliation of iniquity and make an end of sins that is entering the most holy place now remember that at the temple before you enter the compound there is the altar of sacrifice amen before you uh, enter the most uh, the, the holy place there is the golden lover you know that if there's a golden lover there is the day of Pentecost the water day of Pentecost okay after you enter the holy place what do you find the menorah the table of shoe bread what is that the seven church ages the seven church ages is the fulfillment that Christ entered the most holy. Most, not yet most holy place, the table of shoe bread, the, uh, did the video stop? Continue, continue. Wait, before you go to incense, let me evidence. <laughs> Here we have table of shoe bread. The, the, the manna, the unleaven bread, okay? Then we also have the menorah, right? Is that in the in the book of Revelation? Yes. As Christ and uh, vision of John, Christ walking in the midst of the seven candlesticks. The seven candlesticks represent the seven churches. The seven churches represent the seven ages. This is the proper biblical parallel, okay? So Christ here is by typology in the holy place. Now open in Revelation chapter 8. Before the start of the tribulation, there's the altar of incense. In the temple area, before you enter the most holy place, there is the altar of incense. The incense represents the prayers of the saints. Where is that? Revelation chapter 8 verse? What verse? Look it up, look it up. Please uh, re require reading whisper. What verse is it? Please open up. Revelation 8 what? What verse is the altar of incense? The bowls of judgment. The bowls of judgment is the altar of incense itself. Now how did I know that the tribulation period entering the last week of Daniel is like entering the most holy place because there is the bowls of judgment which are the prayers of the saints these are the incense that's the incense so when you enter the most holy place there is a verse in Revelation the ark was seen in heaven you know that? that's in chapter what? 14? chapter 15 
of the king. So, what happens when they saw the Ark of the Covenant? The whole world will be destroyed. So, what is the what is the biblical Christ entering the most holy place? The earth entering a period of judgment. I believe the SDA teach the same also. But they applied in 1844. That was too early. Of course, it, they could serve as a stepping stone. SDA could serve as a stepping stone to understand this. But the real judgment is still to come. What we are having right now is just a preview of the actual judgment. When the actual judgment comes, that is the time Christ enters into the most holy place through the altar. The bowels of judgment will be poured out in the last part of the tribulation. That is when Christ, the ark was seen in heaven. And when you read that in the book of Revelation, that it's a dreadful time of, on the earth wherein many people will be killed. Their blood will gush out like grapes of wrath, pressing down the grapes, pushing out the blood. Okay? Harvesting the blood. So, that is the biblical sanctuary doctrine. Now, the, the, the sanctuary itself, the temple, is now a picture of a timeline from the crucifixion of Christ and the end of time, when Christ comes back to earth again to reap judgment of the earth. That is the biblical sanctuary parallelism. So, SDA teaching of 1844 could have co just contributed to understand this. Because in the end time message, there's a pack, they, 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 they ignore that about 70 Adventists. But there's a similar teaching at 1963. But we believe it's not 1963. Somewhere in the future. 1963, like 1844, could set a precedent. Like time is near. And later, time will be no more. Okay? So, 2,300 days, can it, it be a parallel? Yes. 2,300 days is almost six years. You want to share? Okay, come to the podium. So, uh, almost six years, going to the seventh year, what happens? There's something dreadful will happen at the end part. That's the several days extra. Okay, continue. Okay, so I, I, I want to share also about this. The literal days of 2,300 days. Can you open the illustration, Sister Erika? I have this an illustration of, of how, how we, we interpret the 2,300 days. Maybe you 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 said that uh, we are preterists about this <laughs> uh, prophecy fulfilled already because of uh, many reasons. Why first, if you read Daniel 8:14, the 2,300 days, the word days there is literal days. So the the 2,300 days is starting point here. 171 BC until 164 BC when Maccabees rededicate the holy, the most holy uh, the most holy place the temple in Jerusalem to to the God of Israel this is the the starting point so it actually it approximates 7 years but Mother Francis said Christ will enter into the most holy in here, something here in in seven years revelation. Can you plus the seven years revelation, Sister Erica? So the 2,300 days will uh, will have parallel application in the future event. So we are preterists, historicists, <laughs> futurists. Yes. We believe that there, there are many, uh, there are prophecies that already fulfilled. We already believe that the, 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 the prophecy will, will be fulfilled, fulfilled in the future. Okay. Can you uh, zoom out this chart? 
Okay. But I find this use illustration of this illustration. This is the the beautiful illustration of Badega about the seven years tribulation. Actually, the 2,300 days when uh, Antiochus Epiphanes in the past will be will happen again. This is the seven years tribulation, and the sanctuary here. The sanctuary in Daniel 8.14 is the, the temple or the, uh, uh, the most holy place. When I'm talking, Sister Erika, can you uh, go back to the President of the Legislation? Antiochus Epiphanes report confirms the covenant. What is that covenant? <laughs> Daniel 9.27 so this is the parallel uh, application of what the Antichrist in the other illustration I've shown before. Sister Erika, can you plus the seven years revelation? Here. When the Pope will uh, go to Jerusalem to sit on the temple of God and declare him as God, the sanctuary was profane here. So, from here to here is almost seven years. Literal at uh, seven years. And for your information, uh, histor historian Josephus, he, he declares that, please open Daniel 8.14. I don't know if you believe if you believe to uh, Jewish historian Josephus. He declares this. He said unto me, unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall be the sanctuary be cleansed. If you uh, read the whole uh, entire verse, the whole entire chapter, you could see that there are uh, four beasts or two beasts. The Medo Persian Empire and the Grecian Empire. You can see, let's go to upper uh, verse 13. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saints which speak, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice? What is the daily sacrifice? The daily sacrifice is li literal days, the word daily. So the daily sacrifice, obviously, it was the sacrifice of the Jewish uh, sacrificial uh, offering to God. Every day they have the uh, offering, sin offering to the Lord. Uh, I hope we, uh, we have the tabernacle illustration here, but it's okay. The daily sacrifice and the transgression of the desolation to give both to the sanctuary. The sanctuary is the most holy place. So if you if you read the history, I I I I, I also believe or even as I believe also that Antiochus Epiphanes profaned the sanctuary. That sanctuary is the holy place in Israel. In my illustration here. Antiochus Epiphanes, the mad man, he profaned the most holy place. So, Antiochus abolished the sacrifice, 167 BC. In the stage of Jupiter, erected to the altar. And that was the 167 BC. And after that, when Judas Maccabees, I hope you understand what I'm saying. This is history. When Judas Maccabee killed Antiochus Epiphanes, that was 164 BC on December 21st, 25th. They, uh, they, uh, what do you call that? Inihandog. They offered to God on December 25, 164 BC, 
the temple again. So the 2,300 days is literal days. It is 6.9 years and 100. 6.9 years. So for me, this this prophecy will gonna uh, happen again on during the tribulation period. Sister Erika, la, this is my last presentation. And Thomas Epiphanes is parallel to the pap papacy during their times. This is the half of the week. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Read Revelation chapter 11 verse 1 down to verse 5. You could see John was given a run and here verse 2. There's some someone that was in the holy city in the, in the temple. In the temple. If you, you read verse 1, there's temple here, there, in verse 1. Verse 1. The temple. The temple of God. Actually, Seventh day Adventists do, don't believe that there's third temple that will be rebuilt. But anti message believer believe that there will be a third temple that we will that will build during in the time after the raptures uh, the rapture will come come up. So this illustration. Focus on the illustration. The two prophets will come and the Pope will go to Jerusalem and will uh, see, seize the oblation and the sacrifice. Then after that, the Pope will kill the two prophets. Then after that, here, Father Francis said, Christ will enter into the Mosul. The first part here, entering here, you could read on your Bible in Revelation. Revelation 11, 5, right? A uh, 15, 5. Revelation 15, 5. This is my last, last verse. And after I look and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in the heaven was opened. Verse 6, And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plates, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdle. Verse 7, And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels golden vials full of bread of God. The ending of the cleansing of the sanctuary during the tribulation is... When the tribulation, when the Armageddon will uh, end. This is Armageddon, and the sanctuary will be cleansed during that time. Mr. MC, I will go, go back to you. Sino po gusto magkano sa topic na? Do you have any question about the topic of 70, 70 weeks of Daniel? Or not? Okay. Uh, Pakikat nga, please cut, Brother Magellan. Brother Magellan, could you cut na yung my video? So we can freely tagalize.